How's it going, everybody? It's Nova, and welcome back to another episode of Foolcraft. It is episode number 15, and look at that sunrise. Look at that. Look at the sky. It's so green. Well, during the last episode, we brought all of our stuff to the new area, and now it's basically sprawled out everywhere. I have set up the smeltery, I have set up a bunch of furnace uh, thingies, and I have set up our item storage system here, and I've set up some storage doors over there, and over here. And basically, yeah, we have got a lot of organization to do. But first things first, Chance Cube. As you can tell by the map here, I've been doing a lot of terraforming, and uh, yeah, this place used to be... Uh, a lot more hilly than it was, and I have definitely cut it back a bit. I'm trying to keep everything at least up to this, you know, height. I still have a little bit more work to do over there, but, uh, you know, I, I also need to fill in some of this stuff down here. I don't want to constantly be falling down. But while I was mining out the area, I did find this chance cube. And it's kind of weird because I feel like the last time we were here, we found a bunch of chance cubes, and I'm kind of surprised I missed this one. This might be, this might have been one that was underground. So, uh, I really hope, I mean, the base is pretty far. I hope this doesn't send, like, a bunch of, like, TNT over there and just destroy all of my hard work and progress, huh? Oh, well. Let's open it, then. What just What? That's all it did? I'm really glad that this hot spring was right here because that was kind of uh, uneventful. It was really anticlimactic. Oh well, back to the episode. And I forgot to say which hat I have on today. It is the encouragement hat. Yep, that's what it's called. It's like a, if you can tell, it's like a fishing rod with a diamond in front of it. And that's basically because, well, I'm going to need some encouragement for this episode because it's probably not going to be the most interesting episode. It's just going to be me fiddling around with stuff that we've already made and organizing it in a way that looks cool. And we already had that at our previous base. And I, I just am so psyched to get into even more stuff and more parts of, the, of Fullcraft, but... Sadly, this episode is probably just going to be some, like, a spring cleaning episode, like an organization episode, and that's kind of all it is, but at least we can have some fun while doing it. Okay, so, um, you guys might be wondering what this magic wood planks is here for, and yeah, well, this was that house that we built last episode, uh, I kind of got annoyed with it because what's the really the point of having it? I mean, we have a, uh, a mega torch underneath this blue carpet, so there's not going to be any mob spawning. I figured that was probably something that we should do because it was going to take a while for us to set up these areas. And so I figured why, you know, keep walls up? You know, it just doesn't really make any sense because I'd be going back and forth through the doors and it would just get annoying. So basically, I'm just going to try and do some organization. And here are the rest of this stuff. We still have that one. Uh, here's the wood farm. This is... Oh, this is part of the mystical agriculture stuff right here. These are the mini moos. And this is the sheep farm, or the sheep, basically. So I had some stuff planned for the episode, but since this is probably going to be an all-day thing, I figured we should just get started on this. So besides doing some organization, which I think is a must for all of this, we are also going to be doing some terraforming. I don't know if I'll be getting rid of all of the hot springs because it, it is quite nice to just kind of dip in for a bit. But we really don't need them because we have obsidian armor and we probably need to fix it soon. And we have the veggie stir fry which keeps our hunger up so we're not really going to have a problem with, uh, you know, with hearts. So maybe, I mean, because once you pick up, yeah, see, once you pick up hot spring water, I don't think that you can place it back down. But then again, there is a chicken? I think there's a chicken that makes hot... Yeah. Oh, wait, no. There's not a chicken. There's a mini-moo. Glass mini-moo, vibrant alloy, mana steel, endirium, terra steel, demon metal, sacred, 
alamite, iron, sacred, blue slime, seared stone, liquefacted coal. Here we go. Wow, literally the last animal net. We have a hot spring water mini moo. So I guess we don't really need to care about the hot springs because we have the ability to get more hot spring water. And if we wanted to place down some more of these hot springs in areas where I know we're not going to be building or, you know, will be a, a nice place to put for aesthetics, then we could just get that mini moo and milk them a few times. I wonder, I wonder if you can create an infinite water. Oh, but I guess it won't matter because once you take it up in a bucket, yeah. Well, actually, I don't even know how, how would we even milk the mini moo? Because we have to use a bucket, don't we? Well, that's something that we'll have to find out some other day, I guess. How to create our own hot springs. But for now, terraforming. And also getting rid of a lot of this water, because we really don't need it. You know, we were also getting rid of um the poison and... Um, no, we gotta get rid of this sludge as well. I guess we could just cover it up. Um, a lot of this stuff, yeah, we could probably just cover it up. Here's another hot spring. But I do want to sort of get a flat terrain going. Um, mainly because... You know, this is going to kind of be spread out and stuff like that, so we want to be able to place these areas around kind of a central point. And then we also want to make room for other areas because we're going to be exploring a lot more mods now that we have more space. And that's a sunset. Wow, the sunset, the sunset here looks really interesting. I mean, it's like a orange greenish or tealish. Yeah, I like that. That's a, that's a nice sunset right there. So I think what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start laying out, maybe using dirt? Yeah, I don't really know. Maybe we could just use cobblestone. And I'm going to start using some cobblestone to lay out some areas. Um, maybe we'll focus on filling this in first before we do that. I don't really know exactly how far I want to spread out, but if I look on the map, I mean, basically we're all this brown you know, like the silty dirt is, is kind of where I want the main structure to take place. So we'll probably be getting rid of like these hot springs, this giant water, like this lake right here. Um, is that a squid over there in that lake? I don't even know. But yeah, and then, is that another squid? Oh, those might just be animals in the water. And then we're going to get rid of this sludge. So basically, these four areas, these four brown areas are kind of kind of be like a, the square. And actually, if I go out farther, yeah, that square is kind of off a little bit. But no worries, it should be fine. I mean, we don't really want to go over here because there's poison. Yeah. So we're going to go and do that, and I will see you guys in the next clip. All right, so it's been about an hour or two, and this is my progress. There's not really much here, but most of my progress is probably better seen on the map. As you can tell, I have mapped out these long cobblestone lines, and basically these lines, they just go 64 blocks from where this mega torch is right here. And actually at the end of each of these cobblestone paths, I made a four more mega torches and I placed them at the end. So basically now we have this giant circle, hopefully the 64 block radius is mob free, and then we have four other ones at the edges. So I'm not really sure how far that can go. I mean, I know it'll go another 64 blocks out this far, so it'll be 128 blocks. So it probably, it's probably not an exact 128 block radius. There's probably like small pockets where mobs can still, you know, can still spawn in. But, at least to start. It's it's basically a 128 radius, almost entirely mob-proof spawn area. So, yeah, that's, I mean, I guess it's nighttime, so we'll test and see if this works. And after I have done this, I'm basically just terraforming this terrain back up to uh, be uh, this flat area so that I could build on it, because at the moment, I, I don't really want to be stumbling upon things like this, even though... That's probably really cool. We already have lots of ways to get ores, so we don't really need that area. So we could just block it off. Um, <laughs> that's a little eerie that that happened right as I closed that. 
I hope we are not haunted now. So basically I've just been doing this as best as I can and I run out of dirt. But basically I'm just gonna keep moving the earth around so maybe until we get like a giant square around here and then I will slowly taper it off to be this gigantic circle and that's gonna basically be the main area where I'm building. I'm gonna give myself a huge area to build because we're gonna have lots and lots of stuff planned here and I think the best way to get rid of things like this like you know the water is to basically just use sponge and I, I actually didn't realize I had 20 sponge randomly I think Ah, I think I may have gotten it like the one of the one of the first five chance cubes that I hit. I'm not even really sure, but here goes. Oh, okay. So that actually did a pretty decent job. I mean, it's only like like one layer of water, so I doubt. Yeah. See, there you go. So this is a a really nice way of getting rid of the water instead of having to just cover it over. Although this might be more difficult. Um. Well, there's that. We can probably just block that up like that, and like that, and then just place one more, like, right here. Oh, that almost got everything. Uh, I think we just need to block it off like this. We can do that. There we go. So, I mean, with the help of some extra blocks, we can use the sponges to help us clear all the water. And wow, it is really dark. Let's look at the map. I don't actually see any mobs spawning, ex except for a few right here, but that is way far off. And actually, that is right in the middle of wherever these two circles would be, where these Mega Torches radiuses would be. So that might just be kind of right at the edge of where those two Mega Torches actually end. So, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it's doing fairly well. And I'm guessing they spawned in because I'm actually in this quadrant over here, so... Yeah, I really like this. I like the fact that there's not going to be any more mobs annoying me. Because, I mean, let's be honest, when you're doing large-scale builds, it can get quite troublesome. So, I think that we're good for now. I, I really I really enjoy that. So now we can at least focus on the build. Because previously, where we were building was inside of a cave. So we really didn't have to deal with a lot of mobs, you know, trying to constantly, you know, bother us or attack us or explode and destroy all my creations except for that one time when the archway got destroyed by a creeper and I was super angry but at least we know that won't happen now and since we're working on the outside that's kind of an important thing to do we need to make sure that this is mob proof oh yeah and also I was able to upgrade my shovel basically be able to insta mine. Oh yeah, that makes clearing this area, which is basically entirely dirt, a lot easier and a lot more interesting. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Alright, so basically this is how far I have gotten. Now, it is a lot. I have basically took out, I think it was like this whole area, and actually I think this is part of the stone that needs to go down one level as well but all of this was dirt and a bunch of this was dirt as well and I took it out to replace this area and this area by a lot so the shape of it is starting to get a little bit out of hand so I thought I would make it a bit easier on myself to actually make the circle before filling it all in so I pretty much need to get a circle generator if I'm gonna make be making a circle and I'm going to need one that has a width of 65 blocks and a height of 65 blocks because the mega torch will light up areas or it will stop mobs from spawning. It won't actually light up the areas, but it'll stop mobs from spawning for 64 blocks by 64 blocks. But that doesn't mean that what I'm looking for is a 64 by 64 block circle. We need a 65 by 65 block because the torch takes up one block. And we also want everything to be centered as well. So I brought some cobblestone with me. And the number 256 is actually just 4 times 64. Yeah, so 4 stacks of cobblestone is all I need. 
And we are going to start out by trying to mirror the circle the best. I actually have it on my other screen so that we can do our best at this. Five on each side. So three, four, five. And we're basically just going to do one quadrant first. Uh, I, I am going to get super confused if I, if I don't make this block a different block. We'll make it this type of dirt since we actually... Somehow there is actually normal dirt in this biome. You just have to find it underground. So after five blocks on this side, we're going to continue down to the east part. There is another five blocks, although it starts like this. One, two, three, four, five. And then there's four blocks. One, two, three, four. And then there is three. And then three. There's three threes. And then it's basically twos for a while until it switches. Okay. Why are we so off? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> the circle is not 65 by 65. It's 129 by 129. As you can tell, that is where we're supposed to be. I have made a grave error. I... I didn't think about that. Um, because it... It goes 64 blocks north and then and south. Okay, right, and then east and west. So really, it's 64 plus 64, which is 128, plus the block that the Mega Torch sits on, which actually makes it a 129 block circle. So let me adjust the formula for the circle, and I'll get back to you guys in a sec. All right, so now I'm back, and now I'm staring at a zoomed-in picture of the 129 by 129 circle because the blocks got super small, so I actually had to zoom in in the browser. And the block count also changed, so I got another four stacks of cobblestone, which brings the count up to 512. So now we will start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it looks like after the 8 is a 6, a 5, and then a 4, 4, 4. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, oh boy, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. Um, okay. And I hope I don't lose my spot. Okay, then it's three rows of two. Oh man, this circle's gonna look kind of funky, but, uh, alright. Now, now it looks like it's where it's going to start, uh, going to the sides. So let's get this out of the way first off. We don't really want to have to work with this in our way. Alright, so this was the last row of, or the last group of rows of two. And then there's a three, three. And then, yeah, then there's two, two, uh, two, and then there's another three, and then there's, wow, it does alternate like this for a little bit, um, and I, every time I look back to what I'm placing, I sort of lose my place in where I was looking at the circle generator. Honestly, that doesn't look like it's going too well. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A five. Two, four, five. A six. One, five, six. And an eight. So one, two, three. Oh, yeah, and see, we're almost there. Uh, so that's, that's three, and we're just gonna go one, five, six, seven, and eight, and that went perfectly. At least for like the third or fourth time. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at the map and see what this looks like. Okay, see, wow, yeah, that actually looks a lot better. See, I was, I was a little worried, and I guess you can kind of see, like, like right here, it's like this little bump. Although as you zoom in, it gets a lot a lot more difficult to see. All right, so that's the first part of the circle done. So this really wasn't that difficult, although it kind of was a little bit annoying because I accidentally used cobblestone, but I think that this will work. 
this will help us better map out where we need to fill in the area that we're going to build. Because basically, I mean, at this point, we're not going to make an area that's as big as all of the torches, because that would be even bigger. And I don't think that I really even want to go that far. But it would be nice to have the torches go past that, because, I mean, if we're at the edge of the build, and we're constantly being, you know, like, look over there, if we're constantly being mobbed by those things, like, it would just get annoying. So it's nice to have a perimeter of sorts, but even the torches also kind of set an even farther perimeter so that we also don't get bothered when we, you know, set up all of our stuff. But yeah, that is the first quarter of the circle. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on the other three quarters and I'll get back to you guys when I'm finished. All right, so this is the progress so far. Going pretty well, except for this. I must have missed a block going this way, but I can't really tell. So I, I, of course, this project would not go as perfectly as it was going in the previous clip. I mean, no, of course not. There has to be this. I mean, this this seems to happen to everyone when they make circles. You just you're off by one block and it messes up all of this. Luckily we could just do this and yeah we, we, we pretty much can do a control Z basically of a giant portion of it so we're just gonna start from here. Well it has been some time but we have finished the circle finally. I mean it, certain parts it might look a little bumpy but, um, yeah, it's a circle, and, uh, I don't really know if I correctly got all of it done, but for now it's pretty much, it, it's pretty much good enough. If you look at it like this, like this right here is the circle, and then right here is like a crescent moon? Like, this is just terrain I still have not flattened out yet. And wow, yeah, that, that looks kind of cool. Or or this looks like a full moon, and this is the shadow. So as we exit out the map, you guys can definitely tell that this area looks super different. And there's basically just a bunch of torches out there, almost like they were hand-placed, but they kind of weren't. See, I, I used this block called the Terrain Lighter. And basically, it's a block that you set down and you put coal in it, and you put torches in it, and it will basically just, you know, set torches up automatically in a certain area, and it'll just keep stretching out. I, I stopped it after some point, but I don't know exactly how far it can go. I just didn't want it to go past, you know, the, the, the circle wall, even though it kind of did. But it's really super easy to create, and it's... I, I've never actually used this before, because, you know, in Foolcraft... It's fairly easy to get resources, so you just build a mega torch. But this was nice because now it's actually like lit up the place. Like it's actually lit up. It also stops mobs from spawning. I mean, the mega torches already do that. But I like the fact that it's it's lit up. Because when it turns night, it gets dark, and I don't want to be building in the dark. I want to at least have some light so that you guys can see what I'm doing, and I don't go insane. They are definitely plotting to come over and destroy me. Or not. That guy disappeared. I don't know. And actually, here's the terrain lighter right here. You can open it up, and you put coal in there, and you put torches in there, and yeah, it's pretty cool. And also, another thing that's different is this whole place. I basically took all of the drawers, all of the chests, even the ender chests themselves that have stuff in them still, and we kind of made a wall around here just because we kind of need a temporary base over here before we can actually build on the real base because I mean let's be honest we need resources we need materials and uh, I'm not gonna be able to store everything in here so we're gonna have to use the basic drawers and stuff like that and basically that's all we're gonna need to use that and we also set up a little chicken farm and we still have the tinker smeltery over here from when we built it right the first time so now that this place is lit up, we are going to start setting down some markers for where we want to place the farms that we've already built and other possible markers where maybe we could build some other farms. And I was kind of thinking, I don't really just want to make a bunch of like random, you know, spots like this one would be like, like three by three, 
and then this one will be two by two, and then this will be like one by one, you know. I think all of the plots are gonna try, I'm gonna try and make them as, as, as much of the same size as I can, because, well, I mean, this is a basically a complete circle, so we could do some, some really nice stuff, and maybe, maybe this right here, maybe this, like, middle area would be kind of just its own thing, and maybe, maybe we can make every single plot this big. I don't know exactly how that would work with every single farm, like, I mean, the chicken farm, it would be a bunch of just chicken nests with chickens in them just constantly making, you know, the, this stuff, but I mean, it, like, things for, like, the cactus farm, I mean, the cactus farm is not really, we might not even need a cactus farm, in fact, we might just make the cactus farm, like, you know, like, maybe outside of the circle, uh, maybe not, maybe we'll make the cactus farm, like, somewhat in the middle, because, I mean, if we have, if we have bigger areas, we can definitely make them into one of these, like, I th I'm pretty sure if we, if we take the Woot farm and we make it the highest level, the highest tier, it would probably be about this big. Tier 3 and Tier 4. Okay, yeah, like, Tier 4... Eh, okay, actually it's not that bad. So Tier 4 kind of... Oh, the width is not bad, or the height or length or whatever is not bad, let's see. Yeah, it basically goes out to here, so we wouldn't have to make it that far. And yeah, it kind of, uh, yeah. But, I mean, in all fairness, it's pretty close, so, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like it's, like, five times the amount of this, the, the size of this space, you know, it's not like it's that bad. So, I mean, we, we, could, we could definitely make some plots a little bit bigger, some a little bit smaller, but I think it might be better to just start off with making, you know, a, a few of, like, just random plots. Like, let's, let's just take the size of this. And we will just copy and paste that, maybe one every like three or four or five blocks. And we'll basically just lit litter them around this entire area. And that way, we can have a nice sort of like rubric to work on, you know, sort of like a, you know, a stencil to sort of like place all the different things that we want to use. I think what I want to do is because I definitely want to return to working on the Escalium reactor. I think a really cool idea would be to make a humongous Escalium reactor right in the middle and have it basically just funnel out, at least maybe underground, all of the different energy conduits to all the different farms that need it. That way, pretty much every farm can be powered as long as we have enough energy conduits, but it would all look somewhat sy symmetrical, like, I mean... And, and, and it would look cool just to have, like, you know, the giant escalium reactor in the middle and then everything kind of being powered and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's an idea. I think I'm going to workshop on that a bit. But for now, we're just going to work on laying down some plots and trying to get a good size going or a good pattern going. So I'm going to try and do some of that, and I'll see you guys in the next clip. And, of course, it starts to rain right as I press the record button. But anyway... This is sort of probably the closest thing to what I'm looking at as being the final project for these specific plots, or the final form, I guess, if you want to say, for these plots. Now, basically, I just took this this plot that I made here before, and I just duplicated it uh, seven blocks away from this one. So, between all these different plots, there's going to be seven blocks so that would make enough for like a path, and it's also like centralized, so there's like a central block, so like a three block path, and maybe two block something else in between that I could kind of place down there. And all of these boxes, or the rectangles, they are all, I think, 13 by 11, so they are all also centralized as well, because that's definitely something that I want to get right. I want most of it to be, have like a, have a middle, not be set on two blocks. Basically, something that has a middle block, so that there's always a center for these designs, because that's kind of how I want to work this, and, you know, we'll see what happens. But, if we look at the map, I didn't realize that these actually look pretty big. So if we take kind of how they are, we, we, we can put three up here, there's two here, we'll probably move the, or actually the smeltery might just be one. And then, maybe there's like, what, six up here, there could be six here maybe three more here, 
6 here, so it's like 24 plus 2 is 26. So that's going to be 26 different, uh, you know, rectangles, unless we want to put some in the corners, which we might be able to fit like one here. And, and who knows, maybe we could put one or a couple of them like right at the edge as well, because this this is not really like a definitive circle. I mean, actually, I don't really know if I want it to be, but we could try a couple of them out for now and see how that works. Um, and obviously, these are not going to be made of cobblestone, and they're not going to be raised like that. I think... Maybe they'll be raised a bit. I don't know. I think I want to place them into the ground a bit and see how that works out. But we'll probably be working on that more in the next episode. So with all that being said, this is the end of the episode. If you like what you watch, click that like button. And if you want to see more, definitely subscribe. See you guys in the next episode. And there's still a diamond blocking my face. Oh, how frustrating.